Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello student, welcome to my youtube channel Memes Atea Today we will learn about the plant anatomy So, let's start So, what is the plant anatomy? Plant anatomy is the study of the shape, the structure, and the size of the plant As the part of botany, the study of plants Plant anatomy focus on the structural or body parts and the system that make up a plant. The knowledge of anatomy of the botanical raw material with the characteristic of the used drug is very important in the microscopical analysis. Through specific knowledge of histology, the cell form, tissue element and cell content is also essential to judge the identity and quality of crude drug. It is also important in the identification of possible adulteration. For example, jamu powder or traditional medicine usually consists of several raw material. To determine the quality and to ensure there is no contamination, we can perform the microscopical analysis of the powder and then observe the special characteristic of tissue element or the cell content in the powder that later on, we can compare it with the references. So to ensure the quality of raw herb material, we need to know the characteristic of the plant or the powder material itself. The internal tissue of the plant is very important, so we have to know the type of plant tissue, plant cell, or the plant compound. So let's take a look of the plant tissue diagram. The plant tissue can be divided into two major groups, the meristematic and the permanent tissue. The meristematic can be divided based on the time of the formation, so we will have the primary and the secondary tissue, and on the basis of its location. Then we have the apical meristem, lateral or intercalary meristem. On the other side, the permanent tissue can be divided based whether it is consists of the simple or one type of cell or as a compound, that is, it consists of different types of the cells. In the simple, then we will have the epidermal and the ground or the filling tissue. In the ground tissue, we will have the parenchyma, colenchyma, and also the sclerenchyma. And in the compound of permanent cell, we will have the xylem and also the phloem. The meristem tissue consists of the cell that continuously divides. Cells have primary cell wall and have large prominent nucleus to enter the cell cycle for proliferation. Its cytoplasma is also dense with nutritive material to provide the energy. Facule are normally absent and the cytoskeleton is absent. Meristematic tissue can be found in the root tip. In the root tip, it is protecting by the root cap. In the tip region, are present the meristematic cell or the apical meristem. In the medium part, exists the cell that temporarily not divided or the quiescent zone. So, the meristematic cell will produce the root cap or calyptra. In the soot tip, some meristematic will divide to produce the meristematic cell and the other to produce the permanent cells. Some meristematic cell will separate it from the original ones and in between we have the permanent tissue. The separated meristem become the intercalary meristem usually in monocots, so the apical and the intercalary is the primary meristem. Lateral meristem, developed later on, or known as secondary meristem, such as cambium, fascicular, or cord cambium. Permanent tissue consists of the cell that have definite shape, size, and function. They may be living or dead cell, with thin or thick cell walls. The epidermis is the outermost layer of the cell. It is hexagonal or polygonal thin cell without 
intercellular spaces. In the stem and leaves, epidermis has cuticle, a waxy layer that prevents water loss. Some have trichomes or hairs, and in the root epidermis, it has root hairs for water and nutrition absorption. Stomata are also can be found in the leaf epidermis. A trichome is a small hair or other outgrowth from the epidermis of the plant that is typically unicellular and glandular. Several families have specific features of the trichome that can be used for powder identification. Please refer to Pharmacopy Herbal or Materia Medica Indonesia to know the type of the trichome of medicinal plants. There are three types of the ground tissue. There are parenchyma, cholenchyma, and also the sclerenchyma tissues. We can see here the A is the lengthwise section and the B is the cross section of each of the ground tissues. Parenchyma is the most abundant tissue in the plant. Parenchyma have several characteristics like the cells are isodiametric, have a thin cell wall made of cellulose, the intercellular spaces are present, and the living cell contain dense protoplasm. They also have distinct nucleus and a large vacuole. They form the fundamental tissue of the plant in the soot or non-wooden area of the stem, root, flower, and fruit. The main function of the parenchyma is for the food storage, for example, for the storage of the starch in the rhizome or in the roots. The parenchyma cells also containing chlorophyll that can be called as chlorenchyma. Usually, it is to conduct the photosynthesis. We can see here the iron chyma to store the air spaces or the chlorenchyma that contains the chlorophyll. The cholenchyma cells are elongated and are circular, oval, or polygonal in the cross-sectional feature. The primary cell is usually a wall thick cell, uneven and rich in the cellulose and pectins only at the corner of the cells. The cells are living and usually the vacuoles are small. It occurs below the epidermis and its function is to provide the mechanical support to the stem. The sclerenchyma have the secondary cell wall with uniformly lignin deposition. The cells are dead at maturity and it can be divided based on the shape, whether it is fibrous or sclerate or we call as the stone cell. The sclerenchyma found abundantly in the stem of the coconut and jute and in the fruit and also can be found in the seed. The fibers consist of the cell that are elongated with pointed ends. It occurs usually in the bundles. It has the lumen and also the thick cell wall. On the other side, the sclerates, the cells are short and broad and occur individually or in a small group. It also has the thick cell wall and the lumen. Sometimes the scleroid is called as the stone cell. The xylem has the function to absorb the water and nutrient from the ground up to the cell of the plant. It is characterized by the tracheary elements and also the parenchyma and the sclerenchyma. It is consists of the tracheids and also the vessel elements. The phloem has the function to distribute all the products 
of the photosynthesis to the all cells of the plants. It consists of the conducting cells called as youth cells. The element of the phloem is the parenchyma. We can see here at the diagram the sieve plate accompanied by the sieve tube member and the phloem parenchyma. Both xylem and also phloem have pits or thin section on the walls. Now we will discuss some feature in plant anatomy that really important in the microscopical analysis. Establishing the identity and the degree of purity of such material, it should be carried out before any further tests are undertaken. For this purpose, we need the references such as Pharmacopoe Herbal and also Materia Medica Indonesia. The first feature is the starch. Starch can be found in the rhizome, in the fruit, in the seed or in the root of the plant. Some powder may be found to contain the starch such as the starch of the maizena or we call it amylomaidis, second amylum marante, amylum orize, amylum solani, amylum manihot, and amylum tritici. We can see here that each starch has its specific form and also its specific type. The stars have hilus or the center of the starch and also the lamella. Another special feature from the plant is the type of stomata. There are four types of the stomata. The first is the anomocytic type. The stoma surrounded by a varying number of cells that generally not different from those of the epidermis cells. The other type is the anisocytic or cruciferous type which the stoma is usually surrounded by three or four subsidiary cells one of which is markedly smaller than the other cells. In the diacetic or cariophyllaceous type, the stoma is accompanied by two subsidiary cells, the common wall of which is at the right angle to the stoma. And in the parasitic type, the stoma has two subsidiary cells of which the long axes are parallel to the axis of the stoma. The last feature is the calcium oxalate crystal that is common by mineral in plants that occur as crystal of various shapes. This crystal can be found in any tissue or organ in plants and is often formed in the vacuoles of special cells called crystal idioblasts. Calcium oxalate formation is generally a mechanism for regulating bulk-free calcium level in tissue and in the organ. Let's take a look of the type of the calcium oxalate crystal. We can see here in the first number is the solitary crystal in the tunic of allium. It has the prism feature. The other is the spheraphid, raphid, or in the form of the crystal sand. Now let's check the result of the microscopical analysis of the leaf sena or senafolium. Senafolium usually used for treating the constipation. We can see here. The first is the epidermis in the surface showing the parasitic stomata. We can also found the trichomes 
and also the epidermis with mucilage. We can see also in the siphon the xylem element from one of the largest veins. We may find also in the edge the part of the pit vessel from one of the larger veins. We can also find the cluster crystal of calcium oxalate and also the group of fiber with calcium oxalate prism at the junction of the two small veins. Okay students, that's all our lecture today. I hope you understand the role of plant anatomy or the importance of the knowledge of plant anatomy in the development of herbal formulation. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.